Hi everyone, Michigan1777 here. What I'm covering today is the Gobi T2 and visual lighting system. It's basically the backlight of this TV. You might notice that the TV looks a little bit dim. I have an ND filter on my phone so that you can cover the backlighting a little bit better and make it show up. Today I'm going to be talking primarily about the pros and cons of this lighting system and how I feel uh, it performs, which is the T1. And I'm just going to jump right on into it. Um, First off with the specs, the T2 comes with a dual camera system so that it can cover a full field of view along your TV. I must say it works a lot better than the original camera system. Originally I had used an ND filter on the first system to kind of show, um, you know, basically truer colors. I don't have to do that anymore. The color is much better, it's more well-rounded. Included with that, there are now 60 LEDs per meter on this new lighting, which means that you're going to be more accurate. You're going to be able to precisely place the lighting within the room. Obviously, I don't have the best setup. I'm on a corner wall, so it's not going to show as well. But all in all, I'm really impressed. And because of those 60 LEDs, we're also getting a much brighter, more punchy looking backlight. Now, some of the pros of this, um, like I said, there's going to be more uh, more nuanced lighting. You're going to be able to get a little bit more detail out of the backlight as compared to the T1 as well as the brightness. I do need to come up though and say some of the cons. Now you might not notice in this video quite as easy as I can see with my eye, but this system struggles a bit with yellows. It's more of an orange and the issue I ran into is skin tones are a little bit too red, yellows are a bit too orange. Now you can change the white balance on it, but if you skew the white balance to blue, the basically the reds suffer, and if you skew it to the reds, the blues suffer. So if you put it right in the middle, you're kind of limiting your range a little bit more, and your yellows and reds kind of still suffer a little bit. The blues are not quite as accurate, but your mid-tones are a bit better looking, I guess. I think Gobi could really work on their color science. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this now. You're not going to get perfect color. There's no way these backlights can replicate an HDR image. We're talking about 16 million colors versus over a billion colors on the TV. So there's no way to expect perfect color accuracy. That being said, with previous the previous iteration of this product, I turned the saturation all the way down to 1% because I found that the saturation was a little bit too much on the last one. This one is at 1% right now, and it is a little bit too vibrant for me. If there's one thing I hope Gobi does is I hope they kind of draw back that 1% saturation because there's just a little bit too much to it. I feel like that if they're able to draw back that saturation a little bit, you might see the yellows improve quite a bit as well as some of the reds and blue tones. I think that they're pushing a little bit too much. Now, I wanna talk about an ND filter. I used them on the first generation, and I thought, well, I could try and see if I could get more accurate colors using it on the second generation. It did not work. Um, I think that, all in all, the color science is decent. Uh, I think that their exposure on this new camera is solid. This is actually a prime example right here. If you look at the screen, there's absolutely no red except for that leaf on the right side, yet the whole screen is showing up as red. You can see that there needs to be more nuance, less saturation within the lighting. This should be more yellow, a little bit cleaner yellow, not pure like a red orange. While it does look great with the leaf on the right side, this side needs to be more nuanced. And that's where the saturation comes in. I do think that they're going to touch up on this, and I'm going to just say this now because I feel like you have to talk about it. Otherwise it won't get fixed. One other thing I need to talk about here, the camera does not have an option to be mounted at the bottom of the TV. You can get around this. So in the setup of the product, essentially Gobi has a thing that allows you to see which way you set up your lighting. So they'll flash a blue and a red light onto your light bar in the initial setup pro uh, process. So for me personally, I set my LEDs up starting over here and then they go around and come back down. So technically when I set this up, if I have the camera on the top here, 
you would set up it, so you would basically say that my LEDs start over here, and then the top of my LEDs are up here, and then you would set it up. In order to get the camera to work from the bottom of the screen, you flip that. So my LEDs are technically set up there and at the bottom, and that allows you to get the camera to work upright. So that's a big help. If you want, if you prefer the bottom mount option, you're going to have to find use that workaround because there's no option currently for a bottom mount. I'm going to talk about now the overall quality of the picture and how it has improved drastically <laughs> over the first iteration of the product. I would say the first iteration of the product really brought the colors out, but they were not quite as vibrant. And I'm going to say vibrant over saturation because some, when this gets the coloring right, it gets it right and it causes the image to feel so much bigger and more deep and contrasty. And this is the A90J. This is an OLED already. So we've already got the infinite contrast, but with the lighting in the back, it really, really exaggerates that contrast and it really adds depth to the image overall. The first iteration of the product felt a little bit more subdued, less bright. It was almost, it was more, it complemented the TV. It made it more, it felt like the image was still the focus, but you could tell that there was backlighting. This feels like it is a part of the image. And like I said, when it works, it works. This is a great scene to showcase. It works really well. And you can see that depth and that punch. And when the colors are right, man, they look good. For gaming, fast paced scenes, I'd say overall it's solid. I actually feel more immersed in my games. I sit really close to my TV though, so it's more enhancements for me in my peripheral vision than every, anywhere else. For fast paced scenes and whatnot, it works great. I have no complaints. Um, there is a little, I, I do need to say T1 to T2. I think there's a slight bit more lag because of the LED, the amount of LEDs on the screen or behind the screen versus the T1, but it's really not distracting. I do think after using the movie mode, which is going to be hard, I can't change settings in here. After using the movie mode, I think it needs to be quickened a little bit. I think the movie mode here, sorry, one second here, moving back to red. <laughs> the yeah, this should be yellow. Too much red. And the same thing happens with skin tones. Like I said before, these are perfect examples. Yellow screen, it needs to be yellow and less red. Um, but yeah, the movie option, the movie mode, I think transitions a little bit too slowly. It's almost distracting because you're almost to the next scene by the time the lighting catches back up and it changes. I would say all in all, it's okay, but it needs to be quick and just a smidge, which I have no doubt that they can do. The game mode, I think, is a little bit slower than the T1, like I said before, but it's not distracting. I think that the overall package you're getting here from the T1 to the T2 is definitely an overall improvement. And being that this just launched and we can tar start talking about it, it is only going to get better. That's the great thing about it. We are at the beginning of this product's life cycle, and that means that the more input and the more that we give them, the more opportunities we have to make a difference for the product. So would I recommend you switch from the T1 to the T2? I would say if you are happy with the T1, stick with it. But in my opinion, the T2 does offer that next step up in immersion. And when you start getting into dream view and whatever else like that, this adds more, I would say more detail to the overall dream view because this camera is gonna be able to pick up more of the color and nuances in that color versus the original. So if you are a dream view user, this should help you out. This will be a great upgrade for you. For me personally, I feel like this is a solid upgrade. I would also say if you have a dimmer TV that does not really pack too much of a brightness punch, this might be a little overbearing for your current TV. So I would recommend it for anyone who's got a nice solid TV. It's a bright, punchy TV because it'll pick up on the colors. If your TV's kind of lower brightness or in a bright area consistently and it doesn't really push through that brightness of the room, 
it might struggle a little bit. All in all, I would say that this is probably about an eight to nine out of 10. There do need to be improvements, like I said before. Yellows need improved, white balance needs improved, and saturation needs to be toned back at a 1% level. Either that or the algorithm needs change to improve on the yellows. The yellows are just not quite accurate enough. You get scenes like this. This is a great example. This, this looks decent. But there are some scenes where it just doesn't pick up. You can see it's too red. Even with the white balance changed to non-neutral though, it still is too red. If I were to change it to more blue, it is still going to be too red. So definitely, Gobi, please, if you're obviously listening, please look at your reds and yellows. Because if you can fix that, <laughs> this product is 10 for 10 or 10 out of 10 for me. Because overall, it's just solid. I hope you all like this video. If you have questions, please head down to the comments, ask. Please leave your feedback too. My gosh, let Gobi see that you want to see this product improved. And all in all, like I said, eight or nine out of 10 right now with the ability to move up. I hope you all enjoyed it. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Have a good one. Thank you.